Uh, hey guys. Hi. Um, it's Link to Gamer. I think it's gonna be uploaded on my channel. And Dre Girdle Gaming. Yeah, shout out to him. Um, we're gonna uh be watching some. What is the rest of the title? It says uh, like two uh, true, like, two true disturbing Christmas Eve horror stories. Yay! Nailed it. After this, we're gonna like watch some try not to laugh or something. Or the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, in three, two, one, react. Oh yeah, and if you hear noses in the background, that's my grandma. She's watching movies and they're really loud. Go. Um, I hope there are no creepy pictures, otherwise I'm gonna pee my pants because I really have to pee. Children, this is where your nightmares come from. Last year on Christmas Eve, it comes from this face. I'm 23. I work in New York City and commute home every day on the train. Since I'm one of the younger ones in the office, I got stuck with one of the worst shifts, so I wasn't able to get home oh, until I five o'clock. My family had already left a whole hour earlier to go to my cousin's house, so I had to drive alone. After having a quick snack before the half-hour drive. I got back in my car and put my cousin's address into my phone. Oh, Halfway through the drive, That's it started so snowing. It's so exhausting trying to find a perfect angle I got angle to my cousin's house around camp. 6 o'clock. It was right snowing by heavily now. by this point, and I just I made it in time please. to catch everyone starting dinner. <laughs> oh, she got it. all of my gifts yeah, inside and cheerfully said hey to everyone. By the way, the I stayed until here. around 11 o'clock. <laughs> the rest of my family left a little sooner. I stayed an extra half hour or so just to hang out before leaving myself. By the time I was leaving, the ground had accumulated at least two feet of snow. Why I and it wasn't even that snowy. Who the stories being told? The drive home was nightmarish. The roads were hardly even plowed, and I had to drive under home. 20 miles per hour on most roads. The roads were completely dead at this point, though, most likely because everyone was smart enough to go home before the snow accumulated. Eventually, I turned onto a main road that I'm sure would usually be bustling. But at 11.15 on Christmas Eve night, there wasn't a single car or a single light from the store. It was a ghost town. But then I did notice the flashing taillights of one car. It was parked on the side of the road, and the smoke seeping out from its exhaust with the taillights giving it a red tint. As I got closer, I realized there was somebody next to the car waving their hand in the air. I assumed something was wrong and they needed help. So, me being the good Samaritan I am, I pulled up behind the car. When I opened my door, the guy approached me immediately, barely even giving me time to step out. He was an average-sized man, probably 5'10", 180 pounds. He spoke in a very demanding voice, asking me if I know anything about fixing an engine. I told him I didn't know much about cars. The guy responded very quickly to everything I said. He told me it's fine. He went inside of his car for a second, popped open his trunk, came back out, and told me to just wait by the trunk for a second. I had no idea what he wanted me to do. I was really confused. He walked over to the front of his car, and I heard him open the hood. I couldn't see anything he was doing since the trunk was blocking my view, but and the loud wind of the snowstorm overpowered any small noises he might have been making. I put my hand on the back of the car and leaned my body in anticipation when suddenly I heard three or four quick and aggressive footsteps in the snow behind me before I was pushed into the trunk. The man tried to close the trunk on me, but I kicked my feet up in resistance and held it up. I was able to overpower him and kick the trunk open completely. As I took advantage of the few seconds I had to get out of the trunk, I took out my keys. He tried to grab me now and I dug my house key right into his neck. He fell to his knees and his scream echoed down the deserted street. I was in my car and halfway down the road before he could even get up from his knees. A little further down, I called 911 and reported the guy. I came back in 10 minutes to find blue and red lights illuminating the windows of the deserted stores. The police held him until the ambulance arrived for him. I watched the whole thing and nothing ever felt better in my life. I got home safely half an hour later and told my family everything. I was still very shaken that Christmas, and this remains possibly the most horrific thing I've ever experienced. And that is why hitchhiking is illegal, kids. 
Don't do it. That wasn't that scary. This stuff like this happens all the time. It was Christmas Eve, Just 2009. Scary. I was 18 years old, working at CVS. Unfortunately, I got stuck with a closing shift on Christmas Eve, meaning I'd be the only one there until midnight. Like, oh, I, I was considering that. quitting over it, what but my parents weren't Christmas for that. Music? The no. CVS was five but miles would, from my house in a rather quiet corner on a dead-end street. During the day, it would normally be busy, oh, at least busy God. enough to stay in business, but past 8 o'clock, it would be uncommon to see any customers. On Christmas Eve night, I didn't expect to see a single soul past 8 o'clock. My shift started at 4, and it was surprisingly busy for the first few hours. As I expected, past 8 o'clock, it really started to die down. The pharmacy closed at 10 tonight for Christmas Eve. Unfortunately, that meant I'd be alone at the register up front for two hours. Plus, I had a crush on the girl who was working the pharmacy, and we were talking most of the time the store was empty, so I was upset she was leaving. A whole hour went by, and I only rang up one customer. Come 11 o'clock, I was already getting excited for my shift to end. I'd been the only one in the entire building besides one customer for the past hour, and I was losing my mind. Suddenly, there was a very slight tap on the window. It didn't sound intentional, though. It sounded more so like somebody's zipper accidentally scraped against the glass. I turned to look out the window and saw a man out there. Heavy coat on, hood over his head, baggy jeans, and black boots. He was staring right at me. A few seconds after he realized that I noticed him, he walked over to the entrance and entered the I store. He stared at me as he walked past him down one of the aisles before disappearing oh, behind the shelves. So. Maybe I'll just then, scoot five up. minutes later, the tapping noise began. Maybe he was making an ASMR video. It sounded like it was coming from one I of the aisles. I walked a little to the right behind the counter just to check down the aisle. Nobody was there, though. The tapping was so consistent and deliberate, I knew it was the man making the noise. But where was it coming from? I didn't know. But I had a sudden urge to go to the bathroom. Only problem, I wasn't supposed to go to the bathroom when there was a customer in the store and I was alone with them. Ten minutes or so I passed would, and I, I didn't see the customer. But I would occasionally hear the I'd weird tapping noise coming from the aisles. I mean, I'm not hey, walking, I'm a guy. I'm not walking all the way to the bathroom. Especially I stepped the weird out from behind the, the counter and called out, uh, excuse me? I started walking around the aisles looking for this man that walked in. He was nowhere to be seen, but every aisle I entered, I would hear noises coming from the next aisle over. I walked down the candy aisle and heard some of the sleigh bells jingling on the other side of the shelf, like someone was intentionally shaking them. I tried to peek through the tiny holes in the shelves to see if I could see him. I saw something completely unexpected and horrifying instead. I saw a pair of eyes staring back at me through the tiny holes in the shelf. God. The eyes moved away, hey. and then the tall man entered the aisle I was in. He was making these it. weird noises, like a child or someone who had just escaped a mental asylum. He started mental. laughing and doing this oh, no. weird tiptoe kind of hopping over to me. It sounds funny, but it was a straight-up disturbing scene, and he was approaching so fast that I actually began to fear for my life. I started walking away from him, and he followed me everywhere in his weird hopping. I was back at the front of the store, ready to call my manager or the cops. Then, I looked back at him and saw that he was frozen at the end of the first aisle, maybe 20 feet away from me. His goofy, eerily happy face turned to an aggressive, angry-looking stare of malice. I was officially done with this and walked out the front door. And to my horror, the man started charging at me. No more goofy hopping around. He was sprinting at me. I ran outside the store, too afraid to go to my car, because I feared he'd get me before I could lock the door. I ran around back and entered through the back door, which was still unlocked. I didn't know if he was still on my tail or not. I locked the door and hurried to the front of the store, where I locked the front door too. That was when I picked up the phone on the counter and called my manager, who was luckily still awake. I told him I had to leave immediately because somebody crazy was following me. Then, I thought I heard something over my conversation. Those it was coming from inside the store. I put the phone down and realized it was the tapping again, coming from one of the aisles. I 
was out of that store and in my car within 20 seconds. I never came back. I called my manager when I got back home, and he called the cops. Surprisingly, nothing was stolen, or so I heard from a friend. My manager obviously wasn't too fond of me for leaving a store like that, so I never spoke to him again. I had as normal of a Christmas as possible, given what happened the day before. Yeah, guys, against one. It's like 8 o'clock at night right now, so... Alright, so the story's over, everything, and I just do want to say... Um, I don't think I'm going to say this on camera because I kind of want to save this for a reaction. Actually, no, there won't be much of a reaction if I've already seen the video. But I saw a story like that where a mentally insane person came in at like 12 o'clock. And it was probably the scariest Mr. Nightmare I've seen. So um, I'll talk more about it in like a separate video or something if you guys really want me to. There was a uh, hunting one that was pretty creepy just from the first story, but... Yeah. All right, well, Justin, I, I guess you can end it. Yeah. All right, so, guys, if you enjoyed the video, I'll leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And, yeah, leave a comment. Like, even if it's a hate comment, I'll subscribe because I've got nothing better to do. So, yeah. By the way, guys, the reason that's that um, there's Connors on the little channel icon thingy in the bottom is because I'm using his phone because I don't have my bison and stuff. So... Alright, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, bye.